Good morning, friends. Today is the 751st gathering of our community. Almost three years. In ten days, it'll be three years of learning Torah every day together. And in just a little bit longer than that, it will be our third siyum, our third completion of the entire Torah. And often when I'm teaching, I offer rabbi points for people who might know the answer to a question. Um, and my children love that because they know that the um, the reward for rabbi points, what you can cash them in for, is more rabbi points. So the reward for going through the Torah three times as a community is to go through the Torah again as a community. And what a gift that truly is. And who keeps us on track? Who reminds us how long we've been doing this and the steady pace we've been going at more than our dear friend Penny? So I am thrilled to dedicate not just today's Torah learning, but this past cycle of Torah learning in honor of our dear friend Penny, my close friend, not only professionally but personally, what a gift it is to be with you, Penny. Mazel tov on a day of health, on 10 years, thank God, of life and growing health. What a blessing it is to be part of your world. Let's learn some Torah. It is Parshat Kitisa. Um, we took a break from the Parsha because just yesterday was Purim, but now we're back to the weekly cycle as we work our four weeks toward the holiday of Pesach, of Passover. Now, the Torah reading itself is not directly related to Pesach, but we find ourselves in the desert, which is very much the setting for the story of Pesach. And Moshe is atop Mount Sinai, where he has received the tablets for the first time. We know where the story goes. But here we are, and he hears the sounds coming from the camp. You probably know the story. We've heard it before. Mel Brooks made it funny. Moses is standing with the tablets, and Aaron is either trying to delay the people or instruct the people, or he's giving in to the mob mentality, trying to save his life. When they say, Moses has been away for too long. Make us a god. And God and Aaron says, Give me your gold from your nose rings and your earrings. And the men and the women take out their nose rings and their earrings. And Aaron takes it and makes a golden calf and says, Tomorrow we will celebrate this new god. Uh, it's complicated. My daughter's bat mitzvah, my eldest, uh, was Kitisa. And she asked the question, did Aaron do the right or wrong thing? We'll leave that for another day. But I want to focus on one very specific part of the text. There is Moses at the top of the mountain, receiving revelation from God. There are the people at the bottom of the mountain, attacking or begging or something with Aaron, make us a God. And it's creating a tumult. Clearly they're going in a direction that's wrong. And I want to read you a verse. This is chapter 32, verse 7. God says to Moshe, Lech reid, kishichet amcha asher he'eleta me'eretz Mitzrayim. God said to Moses, hurry down for your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, have acted basely. That's a translation from the JPS. <clears throat> but I want you to listen the way commentators do to the verse. Lech reid, get down. For your people whom you brought down. God says to Moses, your people. Now I'm imagining I'm not the only one who, um, as a child, didn't always do the right thing. And I remember my parents, every once in a while, when the thing I did was wrong enough, one would say to the other, your son. Well, God and Moshe are having that kind of a moment. Your children. And I want you to hear the comments in a classic rabbinic commentary. This is from the Tanchuma. So this is about 2,000 years old. Moses stood before the Holy Blessed One and asked, Why am I guilty for this? And God replied, Your people have dealt basely. My people? Moses responded, they're your people and your inheritance, which you did redeem with your own power. 
they're going back and forth about who's actually responsible here. Isn't that interesting? In a moment of mistakes, of desperation, or even of grievous sin, God and Moshe are saying, it's on you, it's on you. That's not me, that's yours. This is on you. But in the end, the question is, what do you do? Not who's to blame. What do you do now? What now? The blame game never helps us out of the situation. It might make us feel a little bit less guilty for what's going on. But listen to how Rashi, a later Torah commentator, channels what I just read. He's around the year 1040. Lech raid, go down. From your high position, go down, says God. I have given you distinction only for their sake. Only because of them are you special. At that moment, Moses was excommunicated by a decree of the heavenly court for not taking responsibility. So I want to say, and I'm glad that Natalie just brought this into the conversation. I want to say, especially on International Women's Day, that it is so important for us to have the conversation about Moses and then expand it because the translation that I have about God uses the pronoun he to talk about God. And all too often, all too often, the patriarchy and the situations of power that we inherit, that I inherit, confers upon men this very strange pronoun-based authority. The default pronoun for God in this translation is he, but of course God is beyond gender. But it's true also in the Torah that because of the gender in Hebrew, often the language lends itself towards gendered language for God. So when God says to Moshe, Lech Reid, you get down off of that. This is your responsibility. How interesting How interesting it is to be told, you think you're on that perch? That perch is not yours because of you. You only have that perch because of the collective work of everyone. I would not be here were it not for the strength of the women in my world. My mother, my sisters, my ancestors, my great-grandmother Nechama for whom I was named my very amazing and powerful, world-changing wife, our daughters, all the leaders and executives and teachers that fill our world. Moshe is in a privileged position of power, of intimate access with God. No one stays there forever. No one should stay there forever. And in fact, Moshe has to be told you are responsible to get down off of this pedestal that we call Mount Sinai and go work with your people. And eventually someone else will stand up here and then be told, get down and work with your people. The biggest gift in Judaism, I heard once from Rabbi Harold Kushner, is that we don't have a pope. There's no one who stands between you and God. And anyone who presumes to occupy that power as if it is their right, has forgotten that they got there because of the work of others. On International Women's Day, the accomplishments of women not only deserve amplification, we are beholden to our matriarchs in history for all of their power. And to see the contributions of every gender, man, woman, and as it says in... uh, and kinky boots, and those who have yet to make up their minds. We've got work to do to see the contributions of every facet of the image of God. Moshe could not pawn off the responsibility even to God. And God says, you, Lech Rein, get down. Off your high horse, off your privileged position, off of this bubble that keeps you immune from what is happening in your world with your people of which you are just one. Even Moshe is just a person. But what a gift it is to be a person. On International Women's Day, let's remember that people are beyond pronouns and that we are here because not just of the grace of God, 
but because we've got our people. Thank God for all of them. Have a good day, everybody. Let's sing our way into it. See you soon.